Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the Reiki Healing Hope community. My name is Jessica. <laughs> and if you're new to the community, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And most importantly, comment because you know I answer all of those comments. You can put how life is going, any questions. And all that I ask is that you put things only for our highest vibrational good so that we can keep this a community that is safe and that we want to continue to come back to. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. I'm so excited to show you some crystals that I got. And so as we do, usually we'll start out with a prayer. So if I have your permission, may I say a prayer? It is not a religious prayer. It is a prayer to connect us in our healing journey and to connect us in community. Do I have your permission? Okay. Just take three deep breaths, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more time. Dear Mother, Father, God, and all for our highest good, please connect us as a community. Please uplift us in our energy to continue to go forward into our next evolutionary path. Please connect us to the Reiki Masters, the Ascendant Masters, Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi. Please connect us to the Archangels, our Ancestors, our Spirit Guides, Spirit Animals, and all for our highest good. Let us root down in who we are and what we love and allow our gifts to become open and share with the community. And I say all of this in the name of I am. Ashe, Ashe, Ashe. Wiping away your past here. I'm so excited to talk to you all today. I went to a wellness expo yesterday, so I got some new stones that I want to share with you. But before then, let's just really feel rooted in the community. I'm going to clear you out a little bit. And a lot of us have been going through this third eyebrow chakra experience. So let's go ahead and get you cleared out. Okay. Thank you, God. Please balance. Give us the wisdom to see forward. To have patience and understanding. Good job. Just continue breathing here. I'm going to move down to your lowest chakra, your root chakra. And I'm going to do some Reiki hand symbols. Good job. Good job. Okay, good job. Jump up here. Good job. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Okay. And so I'm getting this sensation to work a little bit. So I'm going to do that. Give myself some room to work with it. Okay. And I'm going to pull it up. Pulling out. Pulling out. Pulling, 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 pulling. I hope you all had a fantastic Monday. things energetically currently are not really set in stone. I've been looking at astrology and pulling uh, some tarot and oracle cards and I'm just noticing things are not set in stone and it's not because life is necessarily a mess but it's a time of change and when there's change we don't know what it's going to be next. So I was really sitting and meditating on this because naturally I am a, very much so a goat getter so I can be a little impatient. I want to know. I want to just take an action. But as I was meditating on this, that things are not set in stone, I started to realize something. We can mold during these change periods and these transitional periods. Because something is not set in stone, that means you have the power to shape it if you choose to take it. But a lot of times when things are not set in stone, we can kind of get a little bit frustrated and just begrudgingly have to wait 
or go do something else that leads us away from our path. Instead of thinking, how can we shape this experience so that we can walk forward into our unique path and create a path that works out best for us? So I was like, yes, okay, some wisdom that helped me a little bit. So I'm going to give you some context. When I talk about Uranus going into Taurus and Taurus being a sign about um, self-worth, finances, and things like that, and also Saturn being in Capricorn, and it's been in Capricorn for the last couple of years, that means for the Saturn and Capricorn part, it means that you've probably been working harder than you had to previously on things that are important to you, career, passion, something that you want to build up. And you're not getting the results, but yet you still have to work hard. You still see that you have to do the work. Um, I actually talked to a psychic and a clairvoyant on Friday because I just had some questions to ask. I wanted to get a little bit, um, just some insight. And what I really love that they said that resonated so well with me was that they said, um, you're not going to get the results now because this is not the result time. This is the building time. And then I started to think like, oh, that's a good message for me because I've luckily had the experience in my life where I could put in action. I could see a little bit of the results and that's what would motivate me to go forward. But now this is a new opportunity. Remember the difference between when we have a challenge, it can be an opportunity or it can be a trauma. So it's a new opportunity to put in work and put in more and more and more work. And then these things are going to show up. So in um, March, around March 23rd, that's when uh, Capricorn, when Saturn is going to leave Capricorn and go into Aquarius for a couple of months before it goes into Aquarius um before Aquarius goes into Saturn permanently for the next couple of years. And that's when all of this Capricorn energy, the energy of the boss, the father, the head, all of these things, you got to be a leader, you got to be, um, you got to have uh, perseverance and things like that. That's when if you have been doing the work now, you're going to start seeing those things there. But you got to have patience. You know, a child doesn't have patience, right? The child's like, if you don't get what you want now, you're going to get upset. But hypothetically, the parent, though maybe our parents didn't necessarily have that. <laughs> hypothetically, the parent is supposed to have patience with a leader. You can even think of your work. Just take some time to think of a really good boss or a really good leader. You've probably noticed like, wow, I really liked how they remain calm or they knew how to channel their energy into an action. So if they got irritated, instead of just sitting and talking about it, they got up and they figured out how to get it to get you all to your next stage. So I say all of that simply to say that this is the moment to still build on whatever it is, business, passion. We talk about gifts all the time. Build that up until March. And that's when you're going to start to see these things come up. So since it's not set in stone, you literally get to choose how much effort you put into it. So that's up to you. Just clearing away and wiping away here. And it's so hard sometimes. <laughs> because we'll be there mentally. But to continue to do it, especially if, you know, emotionally or will-wise, you have some um, insecurities, which are completely normal. That happens. Um, and you let that take over you, you can really limit yourself in something that doesn't really exist. So that's why it's an opportunity to take yourself to the next level, because if you're able to do that, once you receive those gifts, you're going to be able to continue to climb instead of just being on the same level. So I've really been feeling that in my spirit and in my energy. And also that message of Uranus and Taurus, just letting you know, get your money together, you pay off your debts, but that's a mixture of being practical as well. I'm going to talk about a little bit more um, Neptune going into Pisces, because Neptune going into Pisces is a little bit um, completely opposite of uh, Taurus, of <laughs> Taurus and Uranus. <laughs> Neptune in Pisces is more about faith 
belief. Traditionally, when we talk about faith and belief, we'll look at it from a religious perspective. But as time continues to grow and evolve and we're entering into a new you know, stage in the human experience, it's more about the spiritual path and less of the religious path, unless that's something you choose to have in your life. And so it's saying in order to get that freedom, the freedom of all of us, the freedom that lives in the illusion, the unconscious, you have to have faith. And faith exists before you can prove it, before you can show it, before you can see it. And sometimes faith requires you to go further than where you're at now. So you might have um, a dream of doing something very unrealistic. Okay. You might, um, it's called like get rich quick scheme. You might have a dream there and then you're like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to, you know, play the lottery. I'm going to do this one thing and everything's going to be huge. But then the reality of it, then becomes is that that's not faith that's you trying to get somewhere that you want to get to and have a strong foundation very quickly with a weak foundation faith is when you sit down and you say okay this is the business i want this is the life i want this is the career this is the gifts i want to give this is how i think i need to do it and i'm going to go after this this is what i'm going to do for six months this is my one year plan this is my five year plan and no matter what happens if i hit a setback i'm just gonna find a way around it that's faith because all of that you can do but as time progresses and that wears on you the weight of like oh i'm not there yet that's really what the test is about that's where faith comes in so you have the practicality of knowing what you need to do and do it. And then you have the faith of believing in yourself, believing in God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, believing in the energy. It doesn't matter. Whatever you want to put words to it to get you there and continue to get you there. And you got to do that for years at a time. And that's tough because we live in an age of a very short attention span. <laughs> Sometimes I'll watch a video and then I'll feel like, Eh, I don't even feel like sitting through this 30 second commercial. <laughs> so I can definitely understand how that'd be difficult. And it's not something you have to do in every aspect of your life. But some aspects of your life, the most important part, go ahead and do it. Okay, so I just want to give you some energy right now to energize you. In case there's any feelings of indecision or that you don't know where you necessarily want to go right now. Or what you want to do or what's going on it's like so many things popping up <laughs> so just giving that to you balancing from your root to your sacral your solar plexus that place of confidence your heart your throat so you speak your truth your third eye so you see that truth all the way to your crown so that you connect with your higher self and you see that bigger picture now pulling that energy down from the crown all the way to the third eye, the throat, the heart, the solar plexus, sacrum, all the way to the root, a gesture of manifesting, a gesture of taking the esoteric and bringing it into the physical, manifesting money, manifesting your right environment and circumstances because you are living in this life. So you should have everything you need to be able to bring your purpose and your gifts forward. So I'm going to get into the crystals part. And I just want to mention, just shout out to all of you all who comment on my videos. You don't know how happy it makes me feel to look at my email notifications and see that somebody commented. Then I, I literally stop what I'm doing. I could be in the middle of like a set in the gym and I will stop what I'm doing to comment. And if it's something really long, then I'll like wait until I get home so I can really type it out and make sure it all looks good. But I love to hear what's going on with you and your energetic experience any questions and even gratitude i receive that thank you so much but continue to comment i would love to love to love to hear from you so here's the first new stone that i got i got it from a natural living expo the expo is called pathways and they have it in the dc metro area i've gone to pathways before a couple months ago and um, this time it was in Virginia, so I went to that one, and I got some really nice stones. 
So if you've ever been interested in going to like one of these expos, what to expect is there's a lot of vendors selling a lot of cool things, but it's mostly stones. Jewelry is made from crystals, services such as medium, clairvoyant, psychics, um, reiki or any kind of energy, pranic healing. Um, you can get your aura taken, uh, the picture of your aura. I've had that done before. I really enjoy that. Uh, and a lot of services and also things like chiropractors or, na or um, naturopathic dentists and things like that. So it's really cool. It's very big. So if you have some in your area, feel free to do so. So here's the first stone I got. It's called the, it's called Kambaba Jasper. And when I first saw this stone, I was like, okay, I gotta have that. I'm naturally drawn to stones that are very, um, maybe, I want to say heavy, but more of like, I consider it to be something that's deep. As you can tell on this channel. <laughs> so here's the stone. Oh my gosh, look how beautiful that is. If you don't, if you can't really tell, it looks like maybe black, but it's not. It's green. Oh my gosh, look at that. It's a cute little egg. And so I got this for, you can see the price tag. I got it for $13. And the reason why I love Expos is because you can get a stone this size for $13. I've gotten bigger stones for cheaper too. Whereas if you go to your kind of local crystal place, this stone right here will be like maybe $30. And, you know, I say it all the time. There's no judgment on that. It's very expensive to have to run a storefront. So I totally understand why they charge what they do. But this is a way to snag a lot of things to see so many vendors. And I got to catch up with some vendors that I had met before. And I, I love get, getting to see people again. Um, I'm thinking about running a yoga retreat and so uh, one of the vendors creates these beautiful wands with all of these little stones and I was trying to find if I could get like a bulk order so that I could give them as giveaways so what she was doing is she would take them and she would put them inside of her actual um, drink but then um, I was like this is a beautiful healing wand as well so here it is so this is kambaba jasper and so the qualities of this most importantly has to do with peace and you all know i love peace i love peace more than <laughs> than i aspire to happiness <laughs> and so what it is is a it's a stone of peace a stone of tranquility a stone that you can use to help you during times of volatility to just allow you to be balanced and so how I would do it is I would just put it in my hand and I would go into my meditation practice you can also pull it put it on your chest sometimes it's easier to put things on your chest that are more of kind of like a long kind of shape but this works as well and it just feels good it's a neutralizing kind of feel to it it's not um this feeling of how a, a clear quartz would be of raising everything up it's a feeling of like you ever get in the tub like warm water like it's not too hot you just sink down and you're like okay good this feels great this is what this stone feels like so i'm super excited to use it with you all soon i want to really think about how i can use it in the best way possible i'm getting all of these ideas i'm gonna have to make some more videos because three videos a week, maybe it's not enough. <laughs> okay. So the next crystal I have is something that I've been really, really, really searching for. And by searching for, sometimes I see it in places, but I'm like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to pay that for that. Especially when I know I'm going to go to an expo. So this stone is called... And this is the vendor. Let's see the name of the vendor. Peace and Laughter. That is so beautiful. Peaceandlaughter.com. Go ahead and show them some love. Where did I get this one from? Oh, I wish I knew this vendor's name. I really like them. Okay, so Apache Tears. 
and sometimes people get it confused though it doesn't look similar but they get it uh mixed up with the snowflake obsidian and that snowflake obsidian is black and it li literally looks like little like snowflake crystals on that snowflake obsidian but this is apache tears and i think you know where i'm going with that this is really a stone to help kind of clear away uh deep-seated trauma and this is something that you can use to help healing the past life, to help healing early life traumas, to help healing some of these systemic issues, okay? So like the first thing that comes to my mind, given who I am, my experience, my walk in this life is things like colorism, things like um, xenophobia, um, in this, the story, of course, is, um, when people were frontiering in the U.S., of course, this was indigenous people's land, and so while frontiering and while going on, you saw huge massacres, you saw, um, really mean things not even mean things i feel like mean doesn't describe it you saw just horrible acts of human experience of you know giving indigenous people small plot smallpox blankets and really kind of trying to take advantage of people and then on the side of the frontier person they're being in you know isolated circumstances for long periods of time and so this apache tears you can feel it it kind of feels like a little bit like if you touch it a little bit comes off it's the idea of you know the trail of tears so a stone indigenous to the um, the u.s and so i want to approach this stone with as much care and compassion as I can because I don't want to give a generalized story you know it's much more complicated than that um and also to always pay homage to indigenous people and for the land because even nowadays when we look at climate and environmentalism we still don't take care and so that's loaded within itself. So this is something that I think is super personal and you can use it to help you heal those generational traumas, family pathology, to clear away things that have happened to you that don't feel just, that don't feel right. Um, not to get too big. Sometimes, I want to approach this correctly. There are times and some people believe that groups of people who receive great pain in the physical experience are higher evolved people energetically who agree to those circumstances in order to have a higher good but i say that sparingly meaning if there's still injustice happening if there's still systemic issues racism, xenophobia, transphobia, that is not the same thing as saying that acts of violence, prejudice, and discrimination against people is okay. When we look at these things from an energetic perspective of what's going on energetically from a macro view, that is your personal experience, meaning you have to come to terms or you understand that. That's not something you can put on someone else. So I can't go to someone else and say, this is what's really going on. And so I'm tiptoeing around my words because I don't want anyone to think that it is okay to not take an action to help those who need help if you are in a privileged position. Okay, <laughs> so I fumbled around. But, um, really wonderful stone in general. I think we got deep. <laughs> a really wonderful stone in general. And something that we're going to, we're going to use more on this channel. For those karmic things as well too. 
and this one that I'm really, really excited. This is called Black Kyanite Now. You all know I am definitely a fan of blue kyanite. I love using blue kyanite for meditation, for things that have to do with the third eye. I really think it's super powerful from that. Um, ooh, and we get a little description. So let me show this to you while I'm reading it. It says black kyanite. Ooh, Shelly's intention. The perfect stone for grounding and protection. Stone for grounding and protection aids in sweeping away the cobwebs of the mind for clearer thinking, leading to decision makings that feel right. It's good for the root, solar plexus, third eye, and crown. Ooh, nice. And is this so cool looking? It's like when I first saw it, it like makes me think of that chair on Game of Thrones. <laughs> the throne. But yes, it's very um, slated in the way that a blue kyanite or a selenite would be. Like, I feel like if I wanted to, I pro could, probably could break some of this off um, energetically. You all see, I chose all grounding stones. Energetically, it is helpful for, you know, what is called the monkey mind. So if you feel like your thoughts are kind of all and you can't get the clear thought out, this is really wonderful for this. So overthinking. And I think, who hasn't been guilty of that from time to time? So I think this stone actually might bring up sooner than the other ones. Oh yeah, it's really beautiful. Okay. So these are the stones that I'm working with. And so, I to uh, put some more videos together so that we can actually have a healing experience with these stones right now you're balanced for the day i really feel like you're going to go out there and share those gifts and continue to build yourself up build community i just want you to know that you're so important and if you need someone to say it to you i'm gonna say it to you i know you got some big things in front of you continue to protect yourself don't back down and keep forward bringing your higher vibrational energy up and sharing those gifts with us. Let me know in the comment section what's going on. So until next time, if you haven't heard it today, I love you. I'm so proud of you and I cannot wait to see you again tomorrow.